Hello friends, and welcome to my new series of RimWorld mod reviews. I have prepared almost 200 of mods, which do not add any bloated content. They expand on what the game already has. Most of that will be quality of life, interface and other kinds of improvements. And I would like to share my list with you and explain it properly, so you could decide if it's something for you to pick or something that you would rather skip. RimWorld is a game which I have played for many years and I keep finding new interesting mods and expansions that help me to stay interested. We will start with the most basic mods first and before we even start thinking about modding and doing mods, there is a mod which you must have, it's a fluffy mod manager. Let me show you why. So if we are in a typical mod menu, this is what the game looks like. For example, I would like to find a mod Mint Menus. So you may think, okay, I'm going to type it, Mint Menus. But all it does, it just makes everything else grayed out and it highlights the mod. So you still have to scroll down and there is no other feature such as mod list. So let's look at the Flappy's Mod Manager. It shows a lot of extra information. It does require Harmony library, which you must load before the core on the very top. So let's take a look at the functionalities that are missing from the core mod manager. At first, the layout itself is pretty clean. You can drag and drop the mods that you want to disable or enable. You can also double click them, so it's pretty easy to control. Uh, you can create and load mod lists, which is very useful, especially if you run multiple playthroughs. You can also share these lists with your friends and the mod list can be used to automatically subscribe to workshop items. There is also a properly working search filter. For example, if I want to find that mint menus, if I just type it, you see it sorts out everything else. And I can still enable the old functionality if I click on the eye, but this is very useful to find the necessary mods easily. As you can see, there are also some colors. What you can do, you can select any mod you would like to, let's say, color based on the type or anything else. And on the right click option, you have ability to change mod color. And finally, if you have some mod which you really like, and you are afraid that somebody will mess it up on the workshop, you can click this button, create local copy, which will automatically make a local copy of the mod. So you will no longer depend on the workshop item. Even if the workshop item is deleted, you'll stay with this mod, which is very important for some streamers or people who like to run long games. The second mod, and now I'm going to show all the mods in this fancy mod manager because it's easier to see details. So the second mod you want to pick up just for your general modding needs is better mod mismatch. Let me show you the difference. Let's say I'm trying to load a game I used to play with many mods. This is what the game shows me. A lot of mods which I can barely recognize and I can't even tell what's the difference. Now gaze at the same situation with the mod mismatch window. You can clearly see each mod that is different and the missing mods are highlighted in red. It seems to be a small quality of life, but it does explain if you miss one mod by mistake, you can easily see which one. And maybe it's just a couple of mods switched around and not a big deal, very useful. And the last mod I want to show out of the trilogy of the most important mods is what's that mod. Imagine a situation where you have no idea what's breaking your game or why do you have this stupid item which looks like some kind of an adult toy. Like why do I have this legendary red rifle? Where is it from? This scav assault rifle. Just select the item, click on I and in the description you'll see in cyan letters what the mod it is from. In this case it's Borderlands the Rim. So this way you can clearly catch any problematic animal or item messing up with your game or maybe it will help you to look up the documentation for the mod. Now let's look at the interface mods which are going to significantly increase the enjoyment you receive from the game. The first mod worth mentioning is Camera Plus. This is the maximum zoom level you normally receive from the game. Everything is pretty small and you can't really recognize any small details. For comparison, with the mod on, you have much finer controls and you can zoom in much further, enhance, enhance, you can see every small detail if you would like to do so. And it also allows you to zoom out much further, which helps significantly. 
on my average computer I didn't notice any noticeable performance problem, so they should be good for any game unless you want to stick to vanilla zoom levels. The next 5 mods, and yes, I want to group them together because they are doing the same thing just for different interface elements, are 5 different tab mods. 4 of them are actually from Fluffy, and the weapons tab is from Matt the Wes. All of these mods allow you to have more controls and information in different tabs in the game. I'm just going to load the game without these tabs and then beef so you could compare. While the animal tab was mostly completely integrated in the game, it allows the sorting on all the values and it has a bunch of extra filters, which you can enable or disable, which is not part of the main game yet. Otherwise, the functionality has been moved into the main game after it has stopped being alpha. The inventory tab, which appears on bottom right, gives you a very simple way to sort through all of your items based on the type and you can also go to the settings and configure extra features such as ability to search in selected and even search in the pounds so if you have something worn you can see it in the apparel tab this is like stocks menu in dwarf fortress in a graphical form the medical tab is new and it gives you a very quick immediate chance to look at the health and statuses of all your colonists. You can also switch to animals, prisoners, and even to hostiles, but in the hostiles view, you'll only see anybody who is on the ground. The alive hostiles are not shown here. If you want to cheat a bit, you can enable it in the mod options. This is a very easy way to also switch the medical care type and to enable self tent for people who can do that. You can see also existing diseases and bleeding. And if you click on this small icon, you can show only unhealthy pawns, which also helps to define who has any trouble and needs assistance. The Relations tab replaces default factions menu on the bottom right, which just shows you the disposition of other factions. It's a dynamic relationship menu, which shows you relationships between all the colonists in your base. And you can also switch to the faction view, and you can pick any faction and you can even drag them around if you want to rearrange them but it's just cosmetic it does give you a better understanding of what's going on especially if you have multiple colonists and you want to figure out who is the enemy of whom it also has a better display of inter-faction relationships for you the weapons tab is another tab which is new in the game and i have discovered it recently it does a bit more than it looks like at first, it does show you every weapon that the pawns have and the status, like the quality and the health of the weapon. But what's the most important thing is that it allows you to make loadouts the same way you create loadouts from clothing. And if there is a specific weapon of the type that is in loadout of better quality, your pawn will go and pick it up. Because it requires a bit more AI and extra functionality, this mode requires harmony which we have anyway because of a lot of other mods. The standard work tab, even with manual priorities, doesn't give you much control. With the work tab mod, you can expand it in a lot more sub work types, which allows you to fine tune your colonies to your heart's content. And of course you can still do the number based priorities, but now it doesn't go to four, it goes to nine. So you have a lot of customizability in this field. What's even cooler, you also can set up work schedule based on an hour in the day. If you are not min-maxing your colony, it may be not critical, but if you would like to run a huge fort and uh, create customizable schedule for different pawns, this is perfect. The next two mods I'm going to show them together, and I don't need to boot up the game to show them. It's a clothing sorter and weapon sorter by mile. You can see the effect on the right. You receive a lot more sorting options, as well as extra check marks for stockpile sorting which helps a lot to organize your stockpiles better and find what you need especially if you want to let's say craft or disassemble specific type of weapon or item perishable mod adds a similar functionality it creates a useful filter for stockpile options so you could filter your perishable versus non-perishable item. So you don't have to try to click through multiple categories to put all your herbal medicine in the fridge the Rimworld Search Agency mod, also maintained by Mile, its ability to search whatever you need in the stockpiles menu, as well as in bills and outfits. Dub's mint menus adds a very nice and readable UI 
to growing zones and to crafting menus. It also allows you to open a global mint menu where you can select your workshops and pick different crafting options without clicking them on the map, which makes it much easier to automate the tasks. It requires Harmony to be installed as well. CM color coded mood bar displays the current mood of the pawn using the color, so it makes it much easier to detect who is about to break. Quite a useful mod. And now the mod I cannot play without, it's called Predator Hunt Alert. It gives you an alert every time a wild animal is hunting one of your colonists, or even creatures, which helps immensely because otherwise you usually notice too late and you either reload or blame the pawn for stupid pathfinding. It doesn't do much on its own, but it does integrate into the game, so it needs Harmony Library. The heatmap mod feels like it's something that should be in vanilla. It allows you to easily understand which rooms are cold, which are hot, and figure out if you have any problems with your fridge or with overheating of the prison. It does require Hugsleep library. The room sense mod is similar, but it displays the room cleanliness, beauty, and other parameters at a glance, which also makes it much easier to micromanage a much larger base. Finally, the Rim Hug mod, which may look a bit overwhelming at first, is quite useful for long-time players. It shows you a lot of stats on the main interface which you would normally need to click to find, such as needs or skills or health or other values. It does look a bit cramped, but it does its job pretty well, so you can see everything at a glance as long as you get used to that. If you like this kind of content, please leave a like and a comment if you would like to add something from yourself. I'm looking forward to build a community and create many more videos about RimWorld. I have a long list of mods to review and I will be grateful if you could share your opinion. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you a great day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.